dealing with the Kani Kapoor. Kani Kapoor! Today's agenda, I'm um, giving my data views and arguments regarding today's agenda items on grants and Mauna Kea. The OHA statutory mandates and mission are implemented through a strategic plan 2010 to 2018. The beneficiaries of the public trust are the Native Hawaiian people. The strategic priorities for improving the conditions of Native Hawaiians are in the areas of the Aina, culture, economic self-sufficiency, education, and health. Yesterday, I entered the joint committee meeting where the grant recommendations of the staff were being deliberated and thereafter taken to vote. I attended the grant meetings for the biennium budget since the very first grant workshop this year. I heard at the first meeting trustees question administration if the grant recipient recommendation list was shared with the recipients prior to the trustees voting on and ratifying the recommendations. Trustees didn't want to feel pressured by the recipients. Yet, I walked into the grant meeting yesterday where administration grant recipients recommendation list was in action form. I looked at the sign-in sheet as I'm signing in and I see that ex-trustee standard and members of his group are the only guests besides myself in the meeting. Then I realized that they were there to give testimonies and present their faces and the worthiness of their grant requests. Only one group, only one nonprofit organization was in the group. Yet hundreds, hundreds of worthy nonprofit organizations applied for grants with OHA. Administration and the grant department should have told all grant requesters about yesterday's meeting, whether they were on the list or not. I guess they all thought, apply and allow. Apply and allow. Apply and allow administration and the trustees to review their qualifications and worthiness. 
In other words, let their applications speak for themselves. Mama Kia, the scarf I'm wearing had these red flowers on them. I wore it today because I thought it was the closest thing that resembles the Lehua blossoms. As we all know, the Lehua blossoms have been affected by a disease. After years of thriving in the forest on the Big Island, somehow and some way, a disease was introduced to the forest, and now this beautiful blossom and plant is being threatened into extinction. When I flew to Hilo recently, last month, I was introduced to reading material about how I should be careful about inadvertently carrying this disease out of the forest and to my hometown on Oahu, Nanakuli. It talked about burning things after being exposed to the Lehua trees with this disease. Recently, I was told a man-made park was being proposed for Mauna Kea. A man-made park? Similar to man-introduced diseases? You don't need a man-made park on a mountain. Mauna Kea is pristine and beautiful, as is godly, not man-made. Mayor Kim's proposal is to introduce another man-made object on Mount Akea. Please deny the proposal. <coughs> Eha Thank you, Jeremy. Our next presenter is Malia Martin, followed by Kabo Okami Malia, are you here?
So allowing this part with community input would be very important. So I hope you take this into consideration. And one more thing, if there were no telescopes up there, if there would no, be no restrictions on light pollution on the Big Island, and you'd have Honolulu City lights up and down the Big Island coastlines. So if you want that, then you can get rid of the telescopes. And it will be just like Waikiki on the Big Island in Kona. But think about how we can really protect our land and how we can really protect our resources. The main resource at Mount Mauna Kea isn't water that can be used up. It isn't land. It's the height. We have the highest point in the Pacific Ocean. And if we own it, then we can dictate who uses it. And we can share the height without depleting it as a resource. And a park would be a good idea for that. Mahalo. Thank you, Maria. Mahalo. The next speaker is Okai Kanuma, followed by... ขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอขอข
appears of concern in the church's press. The Malachia were apart, and the issue of Malachia is being found. While I believe in Hawaii as a beacon of peace, an inclusive place of learning for the world, and terrified of the thought of Malachia being used for that purpose, um, just to hearing the world's just hearing the words world park conjure up pictures of crowds with possibly a genuine interest in astronomy, but with a total disregard for the sacredness of Monica. Her landscape has been littered with a plethora of telescopes already, and I believe this world park would support the building of the 70 million meter telescope, which I have given as I'm not aware of how Native Hawaiians live in a Napoleonic protecting Monica fit into the picture. Fully be part of this plan and how a strong voice in the tomb of the faith of our hand. I will listen with an open mind today to your concern. As to the least of Amakia being turned over to Oha, I am cautious about that option. Only if Oha made a, con a firm commitment to go <coughs> off the 30 meter telescope and any new subsequent telescope would I feel less cautious. Only after the sacred landscape is restored, which includes removing the pile of telescopes already there, can any discussion be undertaken about considering one and being the only one. And again, only with the blessing of those protecting Mauna We all know that the true land ownership of Mauna Kea belongs to the nation state of Hawaii that has been illegally occupied by the United States of America. Mm -hmm. All these issues need to be taken into account with the proposals we are considering today. Mama Kia is sacred and doesn't forget even one more inch of her own pressure. Mahalo for your dedicated service and allowing me to voice my name today. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us here today. I'd like to share with you some pictures of those that may not be in this room but have the same sentiment as myself as right now I'm speaking to uh, agenda item 5C, the presentation that Mayor Kim is giving. I also want to reserve that I will speak to that under community concerns afterwards. But I will take this moment to do this presentation at this point in time. This one here, you see this cakey. This is our future. This here, you see our kukuna. This is our, both of them are today, our past and our future. So while the Mauna Kea offers its wonderful benefits of astronomy, Kea Kua, with us, Tanaka Maui, us, and this Kupai Aina Hawaii, for a reason. Because he knew that we will allow our resources that we, Aloha Aina, do. So not saying that we do not want development, that we do not want any progress, any innovation. Of course, we are not. We fully support that. <coughs> Yet, within reason, we have gone far beyond reason. UH Hawaii, has shown no ability to properly manage Mauna Awakia. Yeah. All of the telescopes, all of the countries, and all of the revenues that have come in, that could have come in, that should be coming in. Where's the pala pala? Who sees the fiscal data on that? Who is collecting that? Is it the Kanaka? Or is it this great state? Or is it the people at UH doing the things that UH chooses to do? We need to stop this. 
enough is enough for our past and our present for our present and our future the monopoly of folks the authority the power that you have is heavy on our people we don't want to come here and coulé we'd rather couple let's couple all progress but not at the extent of desecration not at the extent of breaking the rules that the fake state has already created and they create subsequent alternative rules so let's malama your kuliana and do what's right the second thing that I have is I think it's item 6b approval of minutes if I heard right at the beginning of this halibai folks approve the minutes, but item 6B seems to be the same dates. <laughs> oh, your own minutes. Oh, Mahal, Mahal, for that clarification. Uh, I also urge you folks to post your minutes on the website as I think we're a little bit behind. So even though you may have approved previous ones, you can just keep us informed on that. And so again, I will address after the mayor is done. And Mahalo. 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 what do we do? We, what we do, we're going to put it out to the public as a 50 
parking stall. Because then when you go poop out, poop out, and you finally say, you know what? We've heard you. Now what we're going to do is just 20 stops. So they played one on the public, and they played one on us, and we know that those things happen. And I look at this idea, you know, at, at the midnight hour, right, from left field, this idea of taking some of this land in Mama Kia as a mere distraction, using up your precious time, your mana, trying to make us think about something else, when really the critical issue is TMT. So I just wanted to ask the board to please consider what your constituents have been coming and saying very vocally. Do not spend any of your money or your time on this proposal. Yeah. Respect me, yeah. mahalo for uh, putting it forward, but you don't have the energy or the time to be able to entertain it. Um, instead, you should be focused on stopping the TMT yeah. 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 and then decommissioning all the rest. Yeah. And then yeah. at that time, we will worry about it turning into a Waikiki as some of our former testifiers are worried about. issues with um, organizational matters. Um, I'm trained in Ho'oponopono, you know, I'm a practitioner of Ho'oponopono, and I work directly with actually setting things when they have become something else. Um, I wonder if they're about for what peace is fundamentally, because so I think that is very important in this. And I think there may be some misunderstandings which may be part of the future. That peace is something, it's a confusion that we deal with every day. You know? The idea that, okay, there's a war, right? Someone invades something like a palace, and then you know, you monopolize the violence and then you make peace. You know, everyone, in other words, the expectation is that everyone just ignores what has happened and moves on um, in a way of forgetting about it. That's a monopoly on violence. That is not peace. Peace is consensual. That means everyone needs to agree to it. And clearly, in the case of Mauna Kea, there is a very, very strong feeling about the way that that place needs to be properly cared for, protected, and taken care of. And I think that many of the people who are here testifying have said that over and over again, and I will say that I believe that the testimony that you've heard today, that is part of peace. You know, because it is restoring the balance of consensuality, of agreement. And once you have something where the people agree to it, then and only then you can have peace. That's true of Ho'oponopono. It's true of mediation. I'm also trained as a mediator, um, you know, and, and have worked in that capacity. It's true of 
you know, ohana um, uh, processes of all kinds, um, you only have peace when the people agree. Then and only then. And what we have here from the Kanaka Mali that you represent is a very clear picture of what would constitute real peace. And that is protection. Protection and return to Malama. I think that, you know, the um, people have their own ideas, so I would be very careful about assuming what that management should look like. You know, <laughs> I think that we need to work with the people, with the Kuleana, because that consensus is super, super important. But real peace can be achieved when that consensus is there. TMT is not part of that consensus. I happen to know that there are many people in this room who will not allow that to happen, period, and to build the TMT would require violence because it would require physically hauling them off again and again Ew. and again. And I don't think that telescope would be built because it's not going to happen. There is not consensus. So I ask, please, that this board focus its energy on what the people are requesting, yeah. on yeah. real peace. Because that is the only way that peace can be built. Of any kind. Okay, yeah, I you know, I hope that I'm gonna be able to stay. You know, mostly I just wanted to bring that to the board's attention that that is very, very important right now. It's a, it's a major struggle that is um, you know, right at the heart of where we need real solutions because that is, that assertion of caretakership of Malama is such an important part of, you know, of restoring the air of the people. So, right. you know, I did want to put that forward, that that is critical right now in Wailua and Wainiha. And yeah. um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that I'll be able to stay till the end, but I will. I will try, and I do ask that that be considered. Mahalo.
we have a grassroots effort exposed an illegal sand mining permit for 213,000 cubic yards of sand and in an area where there is no mineral extraction allowed. And we have gotten the planning department to issue two letters, one a warning and one that he was applying to this Malilani company, Town Realty, for extracting. And just this week, they were in the area that is supposed to be off limits, and they said they were shoring up the burials, which they compromised by taking so much sand out. And they did this without an archaeological monitor, which is required by their permit. And so we went crazy trying to get someone to do something about it. Um, our council persons, Ellie Cro Cochran, the staff, tried to get the county to come. We called all the departments. No one would come to enforce the, the condition of this permit. We learned two days later that SHPD said it was okay because they had screened the sand. Indeed, they had not because they scooped down along the sides of the edges of this lot, down at least <coughs> five feet. But no one is willing to even do the little bit um, assurance we have that if Ibi Kukuna are exposed, that they will be taken care of. No one, none of the departments. I sat outside on the signs yesterday with a zoning inspector who was not allowed to go on the project. She was not allowed on so that she could enforce the zoning restrictions. So we have come to you for help. We have very a very strong case in the 6E laws, which have the um, they have been breaking these laws for over 10 years, and and I appreciate the apology from you, Chair, for not coming <coughs> earlier, 10 years ago when we asked for help. And I think that this is the time to come forward. The sand of our kupuna is in the rail columns. And I understand that those rail columns are cracking. Not only will it not be safe, but our kupuna have been relegated to existing as they have in this area for over 200 years to be satellite and sold as a commodity <coughs> put in concrete to, show, to build a rail that half the city does not want. I think they deserve much better and I think we can do better. And I think um, Malakia for coming because many of these burials come from local Okeavis. They are the Kiavis. They are the Kiavis that died in the battle of Kakanegua, where all of the lines of Kiavi perished in one day, in one battle, in the sand dunes of Mali. It is your it is your people mostly that were left on the sands of Mali and reported so many times in history in the in Kamakau, in in the even Thurston reports seeing the piles of bones and skulls. And these are your people. And I so apologize for not being able to take care of them. And letting your people be exposed. 
by a D9 and sit on my trucks and lying of the archaeologist about the burials. The stories we have from the people who work on site and the people who are actually tasked with turning their heads when we come upon burials is so different than what we see in reports. When we ask you for help, it's just because I believe that you can. And whether you choose to, to help us or not, we are going to go forward. And we are raising the money to do the only thing we can do to stop them. Unless Mama Camp comes and helps us so that we know how to stage an effective um, sit in and occupy. We hey, oh. don't oh, appreciate oh. that help because it looks like it's getting to that point. These people made $30 million on selling our coupon the last year. I don't think they lack for money to go against us. Claire, I wanted to comment on your, your runoff. When you gave the voice, when you asked to adopt a motion, which, which in regards to the, your project on Maui, um, there's going to be three areas of consideration once the Department of Planning to determine if said excavation violates the Maui zoning code. The Maui Department of Public Works will determine if revocation or suspension of phase nine grade permit is appropriate. And the third one is the State Historic Preservation Department in the Maui Lanai Island Burial Council to properly investigate the discovery of burials and whether historic preservation laws and conditions have been fully complied with and enforced. So we're prepared as being submitted for consideration for decision making on the agenda this morning. Chair, may I ask if they continue as they have to ignore the laws and to ignore their um, kuleana to enforce the laws, will there be any recourse from these from this inquiry? Once you take a uh, position on this, I think those things can be administration. At the last meeting on Maui a few weeks back, I, I requested if you had applied with the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation for this particular project. So I'll still ask that you have. I have. I was, uh, I was told to do this, and I have, and I have been waiting for okay. all of those eight days for a response. All of that might be lined up appropriately where we can help get that kind of legal support. And I think you're looking to file an injunction to stop everything. So those kinds of consideration will require a review by all parties, including you and your group, as well as the trustees' participation and commitment to fund it. So with this motion, it will help us move it along. We've never done that before since you've been coming to the table. So we'll be addressing that in the under new business today. Thank you. And I invite all of you, that as many as can come, with the Sunshine Law and all of the people who come today, to come to our vigil. Because I think that the best thing that we can do for our people at this time is to come together in the area where they are being currently moved around the exam. And pull it together, you know, for them, so they know that we haven't forgotten them. And we be doing that on this Friday, six o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. Okay, thank you. Just thank you, and be patient with us as we move to make that decision. The three actions that you're going to ask us to take. The motion, one motion, three positions. Um, they're, both, they're all asking um, the various questions, but I think in the testimony that we heard of Maui, um, the burial council came and they told us that they're not even allowed on the site, they're not allowed to have a meeting, so they answered those questions when they appeared at our meeting. So to me, 
uh, what, what we're asking. Is no, we're not the answer. We're, we're asking to hold the discussion until we get to that item so we can take the motion and have free and free discussion at that time. All I want so that's where it's going to be important in how we craft the, the details of my, the recommended motion. So if there's an area that you disagree on number three, you can delete it or strip it without considerations. So this is just a public testimony. Okay. Thank you, Claire. Just wanted to make a comment. Chair. Trustee Alpha flew over there to, to the county council because there was a, a resolution of a moratorium on the sand mining. The dunes, you know, first I couldn't figure out where it was. So. Took us over there, the dunes and Mauna and Maulilani. And I spoke to an attorney. I spoke to an attorney. He said we have a case because all that sand was brought here, put in those towns, were paid for by public taxpayer money. It is not it is not private money, it's our money that paid for it. Mm. And I think those things are cracking because our they're screaming to get out of those concrete.
you know, that the exhibition, everything we had there was so fun. And Mauna Alakea is a part of that. That is navigation that is what they look for. That is who we are. And having anything out there is just not necessary. And I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to speak. Um, I just need to protect her for my Kiki, for my students, for my children. Yeah. And to carry on our legacy of who we are from the Kamala's Mahalo. Mahalo.
skipping it or running, the first one, jumping the fence. Sometimes jumping the fence is important. And out of the struggle of Honokohua, we now have burial law. We have burial councils. And that hotel was moved to not desecrate those burials. We fought for Waukeleo Puna, resulted in the largest arrest in modern Hawaiian history, over 140 Hawaiians arrested. And now we have control of Waukeleo Puna. So I'm here to tell the board that we, we may, we, not, we will have to fight for Mauna Kea, but to go to Kupuna that I, I met on Maui, his name was Randy Silva, <clears throat> talking about Kahoolawe, he said, well, better we try something because we already know what happens when we try nothing. Mm, and so yeah. we're going to have to fight for Mauna Kea. And I'm here to say that um, the mayor's proposal is not in alignment with Hawaiian values and the will of the law and what the, what the people feel is in the best interest. Sorry, I went a little bit over time. But I want to import Oha to, to question what is his kuleana hmm. on, on our terms, based on our cultural values to Mauna mm -hmm. Kea. Yeah. Um, I also want to address two, two small important issues. I understand that today the board may be voting on a small grants process, and I want to testify uh, in support that the board passed this, this um, this uh, additional grants process measure, measure for the smaller Hawaiian orgs. The smaller orgs um, don't have a, a chance against the big orgs that capitalize and monopolize on, on, on the OHA project funding. And I'll use an example. Years ago, me and Kapono Suza were doing prison work in Mississippi and Arizona, working with Hawaiian prisons. <clears throat> and we came to OHA for support, and we got no support. And we were in Mississippi, two brothers using EBT card, RBT to buy food for the Paima, for Hawaiian inmates. So you have to create resources or opportunities for the small little projects. Our community has many great little endeavors that never get off the ground because they can't get into the, the, the competition. Um, and my last issue in closing is, I'm not sure if Oha is aware, but I want to put this on the radar. Approximately two years ago, the United States Navy introduced the coconut rhinoceros beetle to Hawaii. Oh. And that beetle was introduced to Guam in 10 years ago by the military. And in the past 10 years, that coconut rhinoceros beetle has decimated 50% of all the coconut and palm trees on Guam. My farm, Hanakeha, was located in Waiava, Ahupua, Jess Makai of LCC. And we've had the invasive species crew come out and they found one of the worst infestations of the coconut rhinoceros beetle on our farm and in the surrounding area. And I feel that um, we're, and this is another impact of militarization and militarism, but we're facing an ecological disaster, and I want to make Oha very aware of this. We, we don't know where this coconut rhinoceros beetle is spread to, but if one single beetle can kill a mature coconut tree. And they found 400 larvae and about 50 mature beetles on my farm. And we need to be concerned because after the beetle kills all the coconut trees, it eats column. And so, mm. in the beginning of the Koki frog infestation, a lot of people agree that the state and the county of Hilo they didn't respond with enough effort and concern, and they lost control of the opportunity to control the Koki frog. And now that Koki frog is almost on every island. The difference is the Koki frog only makes noise. The coconut beetle kills palm trees, it eats column. So I want to implore Oha to, to look into this issue and, and see how you can get involved and support this as well. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Well, I want to talk about the community concerns, especially at the New York King Buses Institution. And I wanted to affirm that we are not here to take a position on what, we, what the Mayor King will be, Harry King will be presenting. This is an opportunity for us to hear first hand from him. And it takes all the kinds of skills and we have not given very good talents before. Thank you, Andre. The next speaker is Laurie Halimano, followed by Kayulani Milham. Hello. 
mají rukou, aby mám to uvinovat. I'm employed by a new online company as a project manager. And uh, one, of, uh, one of our kuleana is to remove unexploded ordinances from all of the Hawaiian islands, with the exception of Kaua. And so it's my duty to Malang. Outside of my job. I do it voluntarily because I was called to. I believe that it's my kuleana to protect and to preserve what is ours, this land, our culture, our people. Because if we don't, who will? Uh, you know, we allow the, the U.S. military to come in use our you know, as targets, you know, crowning target practicing. And so now, many years later, we're going in and having to clean all of this mess up. The problem is that it can never be restored. Never be restored back to its pristine condition. So it's it's our kuleana to protect, preserve what's left. And once we allow that TNT to be built on the mountain, our sacred place, or even a park, a mountain park, years down the road, we're never going to be able to restore the pristine of that island there. So I'm asking that we all consider that and think about that. What will be left for the future generations? And what will you tell your Mo'opuna, future Mo'opuna, and the generations to come. What part did you play in this? What did you do to protect and to preserve what's ours? Mahalo. Are you glad you're doing here? Doing here? Followed by Rupert Rowe. Aloha, Chair. Aloha, Majado. Aloha, Trustee. Aloha. Um, and we just want to start first by um, thanking you for the beautiful uh, read you guys sent for Monikella's um, celebration of life service last month. And uh, especially thank you, Trustee Akana, for being there and uh, presenting the resolution um, on behalf of the board and Aloha. Um, Melani Keala is one, uh, one person who gave her life, literally, fighting for our Wahui and for our Aina. Uh, my mother was too, she, she died fighting for our Wahui and for our Aina. Um, so, it's very heavy to know of all the people who have already given their lives over all these years fighting for our Aina and to know that there looms these continued threats in the threat to Monica from the TMT despite people giving their lives uh, is something so horrible. Um, and to know that there's this uh, proposal for being called a peace park, um, that cannot be peace. It's not peace to, you know, impose something on the people who have fought and given their lives. That is war. It is the worst kind of desecration. It is the height of what it means to be an occupied country, to have something like that imposed on a place that our people consider a sacred place, and a place where our 
ancestors are. Um, so I, I just, you know, as you consider whatever this proposal is, um, remember the people that have given their lives already. Please remember that our lonely is not going to stand by and let this happen. Uh, you know, Hawaii was arrested up there. I'm going to be arrested up there next time. I know many people in this room will be arrested. And, you know, whatever it takes, the Lakumi is going to do it. So, any kind of plans that anyone wants to bring forward that would allow TMT will be defeated. And, but what will it cost? Oh, I thank you for listening. Um, I'm Mahalo. Um, thank you, Mahalo. Mahalo. Rupert, roll signed by Walter Reed. Thank you. I wanted to know 
is Kuriyama. Amana Kya. When you live at the bottom in the Opala that surrounds our shoreline, we cannot see where it is on the top. They never had rubbish up there. How come we want to put one pot, one peace pot? First of all, we are not all in peace with ourselves. We are blind. We're not fighting each other. We're just blind. Because we don't want to look past our nose. We have more things to say bad about each other than solve the problem. How come we not can focus? I was honored to have you guys on board. That's the first time the community was so impressed with all of us. Our island is the island who talk the language. I don't hear that our islands talk the language. Our island is only 28 miles in one circle, three quad island. Okay? But our people have kind of focused the real battle on who we're going to fight. We're not going to fight everybody. We fight one person. We fight the state. Yeah. You want the state to put up and show us your title. Yeah. Yeah. The county attorney tells us the Palapala civil law is just a piece of paper. He's talking about the state, He's not talking about us. Yeah. You got the title. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. Time's up. I'll be around. Oh, <laughs> Mahalo. Mahalo, Uncle. Uncle After Walter, it concludes the public testimony portion, and it will go into the new, new business discussion, followed by an executive session. And then I also have five people that will be coming back on the community concerns to address the response to Mayor Kim's presentation. Can I make a quick comment on that real fast? Yes. Um, if I'm not allowed to speak again well, after the executive session, can I be plugged back into this one? Yes, you can. Okay, you can. Okay. You like you like go before or after Walter? I can kick him out. Me <laughs> 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 too. <laughs> Let Walter speak. Let Walter speak. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, Walter. I'm yes, sorry I interrupted you, but now we're clarifying. People can come speak now too. Yeah. So I'll, I'll come also later to speak after um, Mr. Kim speaks. But I, I wanted to take this time to. I'll just bring some information to the board. Um, <clears throat> July is is Hawaii Independence Month. Um, it's really Independence Day. We celebrated it um, traditionally, and then we stopped celebrating it, and then now we're beginning to celebrate it more and more. And <clears throat> it went from just celebrating one day to now celebrating the whole month. So. Um, I wanted to let the board know that there is this celebration going on. It's called Eho'olokahi Kalahui. And it's an effort for us to take our focus away from the wrangling that we've been having at the national level um, with federal recognition, um, dividing up our community right, right down the middle. And it's, that whole discussion um, has been getting worse and worse. So. <clears throat> these events that we're um, holding in the month of July is to try and get the Hawaiian community to refocus at the international level and to go to the international level with lessons learned from the national level. That we should not go to the international level and have the same kinds of fights among ourselves at the international level. So <clears throat> the first event... Um, in the month of July, of course, July 1st, and that's going to be on Molokai this Saturday. Um, July 8th, we're going to be on Kauai. July 15th, we're going to be in Kona. July 22nd, we're going to be Puna. July 23rd, which is the only Sunday event, it's going to be on Maui at, um, I think the name, Maui, Maui Community College? No. It's not MCC anymore. UH Maui. Okay. And um, the last event is going to be held on the 29th 
Um, and that's going to be at the city and county auditorium. Um, we were supposed to have it at the park on Thomas Square, but Thomas Square, even though they told us it was going to be ready, now it's not going to be ready because the grass is taking its time in growing back. So we cannot use the park. So they allowed us to use the auditorium. I wanted to invite the trustees to come and uh, participate in any of these events. Uh, the main topic is going to be a very substantial event that is, that is now happening. It's called the International Commission of Inquiry. So this, this is not Mana'u being shared at, <clears throat> at the international level. These are legal proceedings that are, being, um, are happening. So at all of these events, we'll be explaining those proceedings. It's going to involve uh, the Permanent Court of Arbitration. And it stemmed back to the Larson case, which was not carried through all the way because the United States refused to participate. But one of the options is fact-finding at the Permanent Court of Arbitration. So in the fact-finding efforts, um, $10,000 have been put down to form this commission. The commission would do a fact-finding uh, process and then turn the results over um, to the United Nations. The United Nations are the ones that fund the Hague and the Peace Palace. So we think this is very substantial, um, that the truth of who we were tells us the truth of who we are today. And we all understand, ever since the overthrow, um, certain things have been done in the Hawaiian community that has made us believe today that in order for us to survive, we all got to become smart Americans and beat them at their own game. That's what I was told when I went to Kamehameha schools, and that's what my parents were told. Today, we're at a different time in the Hawaiian community, and we're beginning to realize that, factually speaking, we are still, the kingdom is still exists. And um, I think it was Trustee Stender who said, so what? Yes, there was an overthrow. Yes, there was no annexation. But so what? So I think in his so what, it means we cannot do nothing about it. But in our so what, we are going to do something about it. So that's how we're going to answer Mr. Stender and his so what. So it all starts with this International Commission of Inquiry. And we ask that the Hawaiian community get together and support this effort at the international level. Mahalo. Mahalo. Same stance on it. 
um, that we're against it, we're not for it. Um, and one of the things that I have known for so Kim to think about is there's no there's no secret, there's no need to wonder how the people are going to react to this. There's no need to wonder because we've already been given the answer two years ago. And no. in fact, the answer is, is in our front of our face right now. When you look at Phuket Mauna, you look at the amount of days that people stayed on the Mauna, the amount of arrests, uh, the arrests that were made there. Um, and then that story is, is well known. It's been broadcast all over the place. But then we look at the contested case hearing as well. And I think that's another big, big sign of, of Allah Ba'ima. And a, and a reminder, a, a clear message that this is not going to happen. It will not yeah. allow it to happen. And we think about the people that are in that contested case. Regular people, just like me. Not trained in anything, you know, big and special. Just regular kanaka. But they went up against a $1.4 billion project for months and months and months. And they, <laughs> they did some damage in the courtroom too. When you look at the Nike boys and the Kalani forces and all of those people, Freyuses, everybody in there. I'll take up all my five minutes for just the names. But the things that, they, that they've done have to be that man. Ayo. 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 I don't I don't think we want this. I don't think we want this. If we want peace, then we go on the we go down the other way. We talked one of the questions earlier about you know Kulana to Mauna Kea and you know does this very thing have Kulana to Mauna Kea. I think if we understood and if you understood the concept, the function, the perspective of Kuleana. He would know that there, he has no food at the moment. He has no food at the moment because the people who have food at the moment never gave him that food at the moment. And so I think it's important that we that we remember that. Um, and I also worry about some of this in reading these reports and the, the um, and I learned firsthand. First of all, I learned firsthand that the moment never believe everything the media says. However, mm -hmm. quotes those those come out of our mouth. Um, and when I see some of the language about you know a living museum. For, 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 the, for the cosmopolitan Hawaiian people, for a, a people that belong to the world. Uh, we're going to give Mauna Kea as, as a symbol of peace for the world. Again, go back to Kuleana. You don't have the Kuleana to give Mauna Kea to the world. Now, if you remember, you also don't have the Kuleana to define Hawaiians. Hawaiians have that Kuleana. We define ourselves. <laughs> our our, our, our Mokoku Apau is laid out, our Mokolelo is clear. So, I'm just here to, to say that unless we want resistance, unless we want Kilikia, unless we want Hawaiians and non-Hawaiians alike getting arrested on Mauna Kea, off of Mauna Kea, if we want issues, then we go ahead and we propose a Bogoro Park, we go ahead and accept it. If we want Hawaiians getting arrested and we want to continue. Uh, Not really. uh, the separation of Kanaka from Mo'opo'opo'o and Kanaka from Mo'olelo and Kanaka from identity that we go on this path. But if not, then we look two years back, we understand what happened, and know very, very, very clearly that it will happen again if it needs to be. And, and our Kanaka have not gone to sleep, our Kanaka have not forgotten, yeah. we stay in it, we're prepared. And so, and again, just to be very, very clear, unless we want to rest, we want to lock up coins, then we don't go on this path. So, Mahali yeah. um, Aoko, I ask you guys to stay the course. Kukia Imauna. Kukia Imauna. TMT shut down, it doesn't end. But Mahali um, Aoko, it's not just about the TMT, it's a mismanagement of it. And so, any construction that's going up on there, any plan to bring more people up there, how about it? And they kill out Mahali Aoko. Kukia Imauna! Kukia Imauna! Hello. Aloha. My name is Bima Akiona. I'm from Big Island of Hawaii, 63 years old. Aloha, Bima. Aloha. I lived there every year except for the years I went to school here at Kamehameha. With respect to Mr. Kim, I've known you for a long time. I want to talk about Mauna Kea as I've learned about it. I'm a retired county employee, 10 years as a police officer, 20 years in fire. I didn't start at Mauna Kea intentionally. 
My, we are three generations in tourism. I'm the second. And uh, my father's the first. My father's ashes are spread on Mauna Kea due to his wishes. I came upon the Mauna Kea movement because on a day I'm picking up my grandsons, going from Hilo to Kona. We decided to go up to Mauna Kea and take care of Papa's Ahu. Driving up the road, going up into the mountain, looking down, we see signs, some people, some flags down at the crosswalk. What's that, Papa? Oh, I don't know, something I read about in a paper about they don't want a telescope. They get Ahu coming back down, and I said, we should go see them. And my grandson, seven and eight years old, goes, why? And I said, we should thank them, because whether I know what they're doing or not, they're trying to help us out. Anything to take care of the island is something good, at least a process. So we go down there, I sit down, meet Mehana Kihoi, Lena Alice Lightholm, names which have lasted throughout the years on this movement. And then I realize these are young, good people. And so I say, they're good. We go to Kona, Sunday I go back to Hilo. We decide to run up and help out and give them money for gas. Because these people are sleeping in their cars in ice cold conditions because they believe in something. Probably a whole lot more than Mr. Mayor believes in what you're doing. I do absolutely support all efforts for peace, for culture, but I think this is the exact wrong way to do it. We've had over 50, not just Hawaiians, when we say Hawaiians, we mean everybody who cares about our culture, arrested on that mountain. Of that 50, the only ones ever found guilty were the ones decided they didn't have the time and money to go through a court process and they pleaded no contest, three. All the rest, including Laurie Haleomano, others, are flying from this island back to Hawaii to go to court dates at their expense. Everybody arrested were required to post bail. When I was a police officer, people who lived on the island didn't post bail. But these people were. They put out their money, they did what they had to do, and their cases were dismissed. Peace, Mr. Mayor, would start with you and our county apologizing to those people, even though you weren't responsible for it. If we want to be able to talk to each other, we have to talk to each other. We cannot have one-way discussions. As far as, and Mr. Mayor, with all due respect, I knew when you were coaching Hilo High School, you coached my brothers. I have a lot of respect for you. You're a passionate, good man, but I think you're going this in the wrong way, and we're headed down a dangerous street. We need to say, we need to say things where we can all talk to each other. We got to the point where we can. And it's not just about TMT. TMT is the edge of the sword that's being used. It's about how business is being operated on our island. It's about the influence that I happen. It's about, Mr. Mayor, you bringing people who are part of the Mauna movement to your office as part of your meetings and try to learn what we got. And so you can cross your eyes and dot your eyes, cross your T's. You talk to them. They came to your office. I will say that I know of three groups that went, and they all say the same thing. You didn't listen. You told them everything you had to say, but you weren't interested in what they had to say. And I apologize if that doesn't seem that way to you. But the newspaper also reports that you went to an astronomer's home for dinner and had a meeting there about the same issue. I'm afraid this looks more like a lobbyist than a mayor. And that upsets me because I don't think it's good for you and I respect you. I know your son Garrett, we work together, and I just want to ask you to take a look at what's going on because you're influential. Lastly, what Koho Kai was speaking about. I am past police officer. I was one of those that used to go follow the guys who were protesting at Kukaili Moku Village, South Point. I have pictures of Earl De Leon, which he and I still laugh about. <laughs> now we're together. It's going to get bad. TMT is just the tip of the spear. TMT will never be built. No. No. The only question is what's going to be the price. We've had the arrests, we've had everything that went on, and we know the effect. They're still here, they've got the mayor involved, they've got the governor, and we have you guys not taking a stance. I don't know if I could if I were you, but I sure wish you would, because the price is going to be high. There won't be arrests anymore. There will be arrests, but that's not going to stop there. What would you do if someone was threatening your family? What would you do if you tried as nice as you could to speak to them and they didn't listen? Because that's what's happened here. Peace has been exhibited, I'm almost done, by the people who got arrested, by the people who have been on the mountain, by the people who are here testifying. We've been peaceful. Help us make peace work. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Okay, members, we now can focus on the business at hand. Kamala Aou, do you still have any unfinished business to update the trustees on Roman numeral 4A? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Chair, I just have one. Uh, you already had shared in terms of your consideration for the Maui's hand dunes, which administration had met, so you present that later. I just wanted to um, ask uh, Ponui, uh, Lisa Victor, to uh, come forward to talk about OHA's uh, moving forward with the state in terms of IT. The reason why I'm sharing this because uh, in Maui, we had problems with live streaming. We currently have problems with live streaming and techno technological matters. So we're trying to move forward with getting um, better upgrade and capacity so we can meet the accommodations of the community. I will ask that your consideration, although on the agenda we provide you in 15 minutes, I would ask that you try to oh, reduce yes. it by half. Yes. Please. Aloha, trustees. Aloha. Uh, for the last seven or eight months, we've been working with Enterprise Technology Services. There, there are three reasons that we wanted to do that. One is um, our appetite for, for bandwidth you know, has outgrown our capability, and we're trying to manage it as much as we can. Um, number two is we were concerned about security, and so we dealt with that, and so it's, it's been good. But the third one was we were unable to leverage costs. And um, when it comes to technology, you must be able to leverage costs. And so we went to Enterprise Technology Services, and they have agreed to help us, which means by first quarter of next year, we will have an upgraded um, system, upgraded infrastructure, and it would um, improve our capabilities by 750%, which is their default standard. And so I'm, I you really want to thank Enterprise Technology Services for responding to our requests, and um, we look forward to moving that forward. Without that, it would be um, difficult for us to add much more devices on this network, but we will. We have a path now. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you welcome. for the update. Come on now, anything else? No, that's it. Okay, members, we'll now move to Roman number 5A to take action on the Joint Committee's referral to the trustees um, for the fiscal biennium 2018-2019 community grants recommendation. I'll call on Trustee Ahuna to read the motion. So, yeah, so right now just, you know, Koho Kai is here, Andre Perez is here, uh, Mikilani Young is here. Candice Fujikani is here. We're all gonna go up and uh, testify after Mary Kim. So, you know, I really love what Andre Perez said. You know, he wants to know what is Mary Kim's kuleana. You know, and 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 for Kako or that when Hokai said, you know, Mary Kim, you have no kuleana. It's not your kuleana. Forgive. You know, so Maika Iloa. You know, hey, brother Kanani, see your shirt, brother Kanani. I get them on, brother Kanani. Even the guy look, Lopaka get them too. I was looking for that on my yellow one, but I got this and a couple of them. Um, the, that was back, that was two years ago, bro. When you was two years ago, you wasn't with us two years ago. I was still thinking on TV. So, hey, aloha, Marie. Good morning. So, yeah, so right now we just. You know, and, and the, the narrative inside from all the Kanaka that Team T ain't going to be built, you know. And he was employing uh, Kaokai, Andre, and everybody else was, you know, was that went up and went, went share him now and went share to the board that, you know, to stay their course on, you know, do not support what Mayor Kim's so-called vision, you know, I mean... I have nothing good to say about Mayor Kim, you know. I mean, I, I have nothing bad to say about him if, except for the fact that all of a sudden he has this vision, you know, because we used to live in Kiawe from 98 to 04, and, you know, Mayor, Mayor Kim, he was awesome. You know, he still is, but, uh, but like Uncle Bimo said, I just think, you know, he's barking up the wrong tree, man. It's just going to get bad if he, you know, he wants to employ his vision, his vision, you know. His vision, everybody forget, their vision should always start with the Kanaka, 
and that's the thing. Yeah. So anyway, all right, Lahui. So it's chilling, chilling over here in Lupaka and Nakana. Yeah. So I'm gonna have my turn for go up then. Share my mana. But I wanted to hear what Mayor Kim had to say, so I can, you know, I can share my mana after Mayor Kim. So anyway, love How are you guys, man? Oh, into Antipua, Antipua case. Love you, Antipua. And um, part of my Ohana. Mauna Kea Ohana was going to go and support my son's go eat it tomorrow. Really, man. Chair Machado, so after you guys go in executive session and then and then we go in community concerns. The executive session is just a quick update on the status update of the water and water and Okay. Thank you. Aloha, Le Maile. Miss you, Tita. Good morning, Marie. Marie, my fully go out to you. I read your your post yesterday. You know, um, you know the, the the things you struggle with, with your with your kino and you know the cold sweats and all that. So sending fully your way, Marie. Love you. Kanani, love you too, my brother. Le Maile, love you, Tita, and Kamoa. Hey, Auntie Helani. Are you empty? Yeah. It's chilling right now, so we go back to the live feed when we get back in after the session, okay? So, Kupa'a, Kuha'ayao, Kupono, Kolomua Lahui Hawaii, Kulia Ikanu'u, Maipo'ina Ole, Kuumo Iwahini, I mean, Natupuna, you know, Ho'olohe, Natupuna. Stay brown, everybody. Love you guys. Just signing off for now. Madam Chair. <clears throat> oh, we're here to approve and authorize the disbursement of 2,557,844 from the fiscal year 2018 core operating budget object code 56530 and $2,560,005 from the fiscal year 2019 core operating budget, object code 56530 to fund 21 fiscal biennium 2018-2019 community grant recommendations listed on attachment A or FB 2018-2019 community grant recommendations matrix, except for the following grants. Number one, the Queens Medical Center. Number two, Kahonua Momono International. My second. Yes. Yes. Aye. Motion number two, I'll call on Robert, Trustee Robert Lindsay. Second. Roll call vote. Yes. Yes. Aye. Aye. 
Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll turn this uh, item 5B administration on the update on the motion. One more motion, please. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Well, you guys with conflict, let's get that straightened out before sure. we get action. Like to Trustee Ahuna. I'd like to approve and authorize the disbursement of 192,156 from the fiscal year 2018 core operating budget, object code 56530, and 189,995 from the fiscal year 2019 core operating budget, object code 56530, to fund the Queens Medical Center, Maui, fiscal biennium 2018-2019, community grant recommendations listed on attachment A. Second. Second by Trustee um, Oye. Okay, this is the HANA project, yeah? We had a presentation while we were on Maui. They come through the Queens Medical Center. His last name is Ruiz, that young man that presented. Ruiz. Ortiz? Ruiz, yeah, Ruiz. Okay, roll call vote. Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. Aye. Please recuse. Yes. Yes. Any more motions? No. Okay, thank you all for your support for the community, community grants and their approval. We have 23 organizations that will be beginning to receive uh, funding for this next two biennium periods. Okay, we are now on Roman numeral 5B. I'd like to turn this over to Kamanao on the sand mining and related historic preservation and burial issues and call to the table. Yes, mahalo, Madam Chair. I'd like to call upon our compliance manager, Kai Markell, and public policy manager, Jocelyn Doan. Um, as a response to the several weeks ago, the, the trustees uh, receiving community feedback regarding the Mount Alani sand dunes matter, um, administration did convene uh, uh, with respect to what the possibility of uh, OHA's uh, Kuleana and role is and was reminded by Kai in October 2015 the board had approved the Ivi Kupuna policy. Uh, in that policy called for care management and protection of Ivi Kupuna um, and in real brief, it states that OHA shall protect and promote the reverence and cultural importance of proper care, mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. and protection of ancestral native fire remains, or Ivi Kupuna, as the most cherished possession within our Lahui. Uh, we shall also ensure that efforts, initiatives, and the proper care, management, and protection of Ivi Kupuna is the most paramount consideration. And we look at, there's three subsections with respect to uh, planning, consultation, decision making, uh, and so forth. Uh, so administration met uh, yesterday <coughs> in a lengthy meeting to come up with um, a proposed motion for the board to consider uh, with specific actions. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jocelyn and then Kai for additional comments uh, with respect to what this calls for. Okay, thank you. Coming out, I I'd like to hear what they got to say and then we're going to open it up for questions right after. Just technical. Oh, okay, go ahead. Thank you, Just Chair. Just a, just a quick question. Do we have a copy? I, I don't have a copy before me of the proposed resolution. Um, Chair, it's not a resolution. It's a motion. So it's related to um, the work that we have been doing uh, both from before the board meeting and now. And so it would, um, it, it's a pretty simple motion. It, it's not a resolution. Um, so we confirmed with Judge Klein because it's on the agenda that it's appropriate if the board would so desire right, to pass that two motion. Thirds, by two-thirds vote, you could put it on, like I said, in Maui. Would you guys like to proceed? Yes. Please continue. But so uh, can, can we write, can we have the motion uh, put up on the board so we know what we're looking at? Okay, great. So we're just going to provide a little bit of background information about what we've been doing. Um, to address the issue, uh, the sand dune issue. So, you know, really quickly, the sand dunes in central Maui were formed probably 30,000 or so years ago. Um, it once ran from Kahului Harbor to Ma'alaya and then to McKenna. 
And as um, Auntie Claire shared earlier, uh, immense cultural value and um, well known for having EV from battles uh, and other uh, and other burial purposes. So from the 1970s, so we're talking a pretty, about a pretty massive area. So just a big picture perspective. From the 1970s, they started building upon the sand dunes for homes, other developments, so the Kahumanu Shopping Center, condos, resort developments, government offices. Uh, and they were doing some extraction, but they started changing the way that they did their development more recently in the mid 80s, where rather than building upon the dunes, um, they sand mined um, the areas and flattened it, uh, and including you know, to do the development, roadways, leveling lots, etc. So the first barges um, of sand started being shipped to Honolulu starting in 1985. Uh, according to the Department of Public Works and Environmental Management, about five and a half million tons of sand have been shipped from Maui um, between 1985 and 2006. In 2009, the Maui Lanai Island Burial Council chair, um, the late uh, Uncle Charlie Maxwell, demanded that there should be an accounting of the burials that were impacted by the project. Uh, as far as we know, and as Kai will go into a little bit more, none has been provided so far. You know, the uh, burial councils had struggled kind of during that time to meet um, quorum, and so perhaps were not as effective as they could have been as a result of that. Uh, and you know, and there are other issues related to them getting appropriate legal advice, um, them, uh, their ability to meet, or so they're told that they're not allowed to meet. Um, and it, Kai may go a little bit into that as well. But um, so, so that has not yet happened, and that's uh, a problem. So as a result of you know, intense community um, work and action and concerns, the media did an investigation. I think we all saw that in the news. Um, and as a result, or in concert with, the mayor made an announcement about his concerns about the sand being depleted. Uh, and then we saw his Department of Planning director issue a notice of violation. So prior to our board meeting, compliance had already been communicating with some Maui beneficiaries, I think as um, Auntie Claire had shared, as well as Shipti, as well as the Burial Council. Um, and he's going to share a little bit about what our team has gathered so far, what we're doing uh, to move forward with regards to the historic preservation tools that we do have. Um, after our board meeting, our public policy staff looked further into um, the department's uh, notice of violation and did more of a thorough analysis which we think will help the department find that um, the Maulilani partners are actually violating the zoning code. Um, and uh, I think will be stronger tools in the immediate future um, because we think there's an actual violation happening. So he's going to share a little bit about that, what we've done so far, and then what we can do moving forward as it relates to uh, the land use and zoning um, tools, as I'm going to describe it. Wayne? Okay. okay. All right. So, um, you know, as just mentioned, in light of the pressing nature of the concerns that were raised at our BOT meeting on Maui, our immediate goal was to see if there's anything that could be done um, to immediately address the sand mining and the impacts of EV in central Maui, and particularly in Maui Lani Phase Nine, which is where the sand mining was going on. Um, you know, we were, you know, it was as our beneficiaries mentioned, there was a resolution that was introduced in the Maui County Council's. Uh, infrastructure and Environmental Management Committee, but as you know, uh, county legislation can take a long time. So we wanted to see, and particularly look into and verify whether there would be land use issues that could um, be enforced more in a more timely manner. Um, and so we did look at the zoning code in Maui, and um, based on our research, uh, and consistent with the notice of warning letter that the Department of Planning sent to Maui Lani, uh, it seemed that it was a, that the sand mining that was going on was a pretty clear violation of the Maui County Zoning Code. Um, so the zoning code requires um, that any uses be listed as a permitted use in, in a district where the uses are occurring. Um, otherwise, it, to, it needs like, like a variance or conditional use permit or zone change or something of, of that nature. Um, the, the zoning code for the Wailuku Kahului Project District 1, or the Maui Lani District where pro, uh, Phase 9 is located, all its listed uses are more or less consistent with like a residential community. So you have you know, houses, you have schools, parks village use, mixed use areas, uh, nothing uh, in close to an industrial sand mine, um, which is pr pretty much what was going on. Um, so, um, you know, the closest thing to in the entire zoning code to what was going on is uh, mining and resource extraction, and that's a use that's only permitted in the agriculture district and only with a special use permit. Um, so again, it seemed like, it seems like, you know, our belief is that the enforcement of the zoning code could provide some immediate relief 
um, in terms of you know, stopping the sand mining that's going on in phase nine. Um, we did look into the grading permit that was issued to Malilani in uh, 2014 for phase nine because Malilani's attorneys are asserting that the grading permit authorized their sand excavation activities. Um, almost immediately when looking at the terms and conditions for the permit, uh, it clearly states that this grading permit is only to show compliance with the Maui County Code with respect to um, environment, uh, soil erosion control. Um, basically, it's to make sure that if you're going to move earth, if you're going to grade, you're en engaging in best management practices to you know, minimize runoff and minimize the risk of flooding and so forth. It expressly says that the permittee may be subject to other applicable rules and regulations, uh, such as the zoning code. Um, so by the express terms of the grading permit, it seems like you know, yeah. there's no way that could have um, authorize Maui Lani to engage in a unpermitted use in the uh, in terms of zoning. Um, you know, so cut to the chase. They're in violation. Right. And so, um, so you know, what this, uh, you know, and one thing to note, the grading permit did um, show that when Maui Lani applied, they indicated that there were no known burials uh, in phase nine. Um, and regardless of whether, you know, they should have known or, you know, Regardless of their intent, when they made that representation, in 2016, Maui Lani reported that they had, at least three times to the uh, Maui Lanai Burial Council, that they had inadvertently encountered burials. And so, you know, we believe that an argument could be made that the information that was submitted was therefore incorrect with respect to burials, and that in itself can be a, a basis for revocation or suspension of the grading permit. Um, and so with this information in hand, we sent a letter to the Maui Department of Planning. Uh, we also submitted testimony to the, um, the council committee on um, uh, infrastructure and environmental management, um, basically highlighting our beliefs that one, industrial scale sand mining uh, was clearly an impermissible use in the Maui Lani uh, district under the zoning code. Uh, two, that the grading and grubbing permit um, could not authorize on its own uh, 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 impermissible land use. Um, and three, that the grading permit itself may be subject to suspension of revocation. Um, and in our, in our letter to the planning department, we also asked for a confirmation of their position on these issues. So again, whether the industrial scale commercial sand mining that was occurring in Malilani is an impermissible use in the Malilani district, uh, whether the grading and grubbing permit could authorize this kind of land use, uh, not with selling a zoning code, uh, whether the county plans uh, to pursue some kind of injunctive relief against further sand mining, uh, whether and how the department plans to uh, monitor and enforce uh, any land use violations, and um, finally, whether the grading permit uh, should be revoked based on incorrect information or, or other um, bases. Um, and so we intend to follow up with the Department of Planning and the Department of Public Works, which issued the grading permit, um, and we'll continue to huh? track the um, yeah. Madam Chair, please, um, you know, uh, before we heard from him, we were discussing all of these things that they've already written about. So maybe what we should be asking council is based on what our staff has already done, would it be quicker for us to just issue an injunction and ask until they answer all these <coughs> questions? Um, Are we going to issue an injunction? Huh? Are we going to issue an injunction? I don't know. Yeah, you're the yeah, lawyer. Sorry. Not a court. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. So the, this, this motion that we are proposing is that administration can still take very progressive action steps yes. uh, against the county and uh, the land the, the land zoning committee. This also will help our strategy is to believe is to empower the Maui and Lanai Island Borough Council also to activate SHIPTI in terms of a much more comprehensive, thorough archaeological <coughs> study. So while that, that's a, a long-term suggestion, just to kind of what we're, as you had mentioned, I think the community wants uh, immediate uh, action to be done to preserve the sand dunes. And so we believe that this is stuff that we can actually do now um, in collaboration with the community, Maui Island and Lanai Burial Council, and actually what the work that Kai does already, which should be, uh, we can already kind of engage them already. You want to speak to that, Kai? Um, actually, we're running out of time because okay. Mayor Kim has to leave at 1230. Oh, sure. So okay. if the motion is acceptable to the trustees or any kind of amendments you would like to make, this is the time to do it. And then we'll proceed to take action. Right. Madam Chair, may I make the motion? Please do, Maui Trustee Carmen Hululiz de Lindsay. <laughs> Mahalo. I'd like to move to approve the following statement. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs calls upon Maui Lani Partners 
to cease all sand and other resource extraction and grading to allow, number one, the Maui Department of Planning to determine if sand extraction violates the Maui Zoning Code. Number two, the Maui Department of Public Works to determine if revocation or suspension of the Phase 9 grading permit is appropriate. And number three, the State Historic Preservation Department and the Maui Lanai Islands Burial Council to properly investigate the discovery of burials and whether historic preservation laws and conditions have been fully complied with and enforced. Second. May I speak to the motion? Trustee Okina. Thank you very much. I'm not going to oppose this motion because I think we're on the right track to protect our EV of our kupuna. But I am going to vote Kanalua, <coughs> and it is only for the following reason. Um, I've just seen the motion, and as a fiduciary trustee here, I've not even been able to discuss this with my staff and research this. We have a long-range game that we want to win in this issue. We don't want to take a short-term action unless we've looked at every option, including suing the uh, Mauna Lani partners, which we can't discuss here as well. And so we're starting a process, and I think that we need a better analysis of where we're going to go and how we're going to win. But with that said, I won't oppose it. I'll just vote Kanalua. Thank you. I want, to I want to speak in favor of this motion because I went to visit it and we need to do something now. We could discuss it. I have information for you, Trustee Akina, that it's kind of important. It's almost imperative that we do this today. You're just digging away all of this sand with Evie in it. It's sad. <laughs> Mahalo, Chair. I just want to say that uh, thank you to our staff because I am the Maui trustee. I was brought in a little earlier and I apologize to you, Trustee Kelly. Um, but I was aware of this, uh, these steps wanting um, to be taken by our administration. And I did actually pass it on to the council last week in the council meeting um, on behalf of our staff. So um, I encourage, too, that our board vote in favor of this because, yes, we have to do something now, and we cannot wait any longer. Mahal. So to all the trustees today, I, I encourage all of you to vote to support our people. It's very important. Stand on the side. Let's stand with them. I want to you know,
And I think most of it is because of misunderstanding, and I take full responsibility for that misunderstanding because the words used were mine. I did not come here to make a proposal. Absolutely not. There is a proposal. I would therefore like to give a little background of why I'm here and the situation I am here. I think Mr. Lindsay knows me out of the longest thing that I hear because he's from my island. Go back to 1970. I hear that for several days. <laughs> 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 I got to tell you a joke before we start. Because <laughs> was on my mind and that's the way I came in. I remember talking about uh, over the year in the Hawaiians. And this was an opening at the uh, Imilo. A joke was made by Senator Yanoa. He says, always remember Christopher Columbus got lost. That's why he found America. Hawaiians never got lost. <laughs> joke, but not a joke. But anyway, getting back to this. The first time I made a public statement about Mauna Kea was, I think, in 1981. Records of that are, I think, at the Imiloa, in regards to uh, some place, because I was told that. And I try to write down here, generally speaking, I think some of you may know, I, I don't prepare to write. I prepare emotionally what I want to say, and I hope Mr. Lindsay will support me on this. I don't think you can find anyone on the Big Island that would say I've misled purposely played politics purposely, or cited a power of money for power of money. That is just not me. And I ask you to believe that. And I think Mr. Lindsay knows that. Back in 1981, I was in charge of civil defense for the island of Hawaii. The university at that time were contemplating things they wanted to do in Mauna Kea. They asked me as head of civil defense if I would come and testify in regards to things of natural hazards that they should be aware of. And I told them about the standard things of the weather, the blizzards, the suddenness of it, the altitude, acclimation of altitude, and all those things necessary if you're going to do anything up there, whether you're a hunter or a sightseer or of the telescope. After my testimony was finished, I asked if I could say something personal. And as best as my memory can hold me, but some of it is written on the record, I said this in 1981. I think this statement reflects in full what I feel about Hawaii, the Hawaiians of this land, of this earth. And I will say before I read this, some of the comments did affect me in a negative as far as being hurt that people would think of what they say. On your comments of what is my kuleana, I have no kuleana except my love of this place. I have no authority in regards to Mauna Kea. It never was presented of any kind of authority to anyone. Any defense of Governor Ige, uh, which needs no defense. He did not authorize me to say anything on his behalf. I don't know how things like that come about. In a proposal of a park, I can imagine why that came because of my use of the word park. And it was because of a, that's the only word I could think of at the time. In 1981, this is what it said to the University of Hawaii. The people of science looks upon Mauna Kea as a place ideal for the quest of knowledge because of location, because of altitude, because of purity of air. In your use of this very special place for science, be aware that for many of people of past and of present, it is looked upon as part of their soul. In your use of Mauna Kea, please be of care, of caution, 
and above all, compassion. That has never changed. This was stated publicly in 1981, but this is what I felt since the day I can remember of life, of what I feel of this very special place and the very special people I am lucky to have been surrounded with. I know I'm probably older than all of you in here. And I'm 78 years old. Therefore, college and military, this is my home of choice. I can find tropics elsewhere, but I will not find people of the same elsewhere. And how this came about of sitting here before you, which I am very grateful for the opportunity. When I got elected last year, as some of you may know, we have a system there that if you win the primary by over 50%, you don't have to run in the general. And that did happen. And don't ask me how. <laughs> I was asked by the corner Rotary shortly after the election because they have a policy not to invite politicians while there is a contested uh, primary or, or general. And since I won, they asked me if I would come to ask questions about what I feel. And I did go. I think it was no more than a couple of weeks after the primary election. So sometime in late August of last year. On different questions, they asked me about Mauna Kea. There's no preparation on what I'm going to say of Mauna Kea. I'm not prepared for this except for what I wrote in the past. And this is what it said. Because it said, what do you feel? But prior to answering, I said, be aware. I'm speaking as Harry Kim, citizen. Nobody else. I'm not mayor yet. And even as mayor, I know we have no authority of any kind, as you use the word kuleana, of Mauna Kea. There's an issue of ceded lands, governed by the state, passed on to land and natural resources, and subleased, as we know, to the University of Hawaii. I know all of that. What is the role of county? Nada. I was asked as a citizen who got elected to speak before the corner rotary, what do you feel about this, this, and what other questions were? Do you have an opinion of Mauna Kea? Of course I do, that's my home. How can I live on that island and not have true feeling of Mauna Kea and what people feel and what I feel? I just read to you what I wrote in 1981. But that's what I read, I felt that decades before that. And this is what I said then. I know the controversy of Mauna Kea. I don't know what is right. I don't know what is wrong. And as I said then, I say here, I'm not here to defend my position. I was there to explain my position. With no kuleana of Mauna Kea was asked as a person, what do you feel? And before I read what I said, I was a speaker for four Memorial Day events this past month. I have a deepest passion of, against mankind's cruelty to man that most people have. And maybe I shouldn't say that because I don't know the vast majority of you. I've always felt, and I've said this from Japan to Korea to Germany to Indonesia, to Honduras and all the various countries I was asked to go to work. I feel that war is mankind's greatest failure. And as long as you think war is the answer to peace, we will always have wars. I'm not a very strong person inside. That's why some of the things said about me, it does hurt, and I will openly say that to you. I'm not a very strong person inside. 
I don't like violence. I can't stand violence. And I don't mean between countries. I mean even between people. Yes, I believe in serving the country. That's why I went as a medic. And they allowed me to do that. Where I wouldn't have to be a gun toter. I hope you understand that and why I made the position of Mauna Kea. But it is not of Mauna Kea. This is what I feel of life. I feel that I am one of the most fortunate person on God's earth because I was born among people of Hawaii, of Hawaiians. And I've said it all over, not because of here, because this is who I am. And some of you may have heard me say it, whether it be Germany, Japan, Indonesia, that I am so blessed to have been born and raised with Hawaiians, who I consider the most gracious, warmest people on God's earth. I've said that many, many times, not before board, and God forbid, not because of a controversial issue of Mauna Kea. Vision for Mauna Kea answered publicly for the first time last year. That I believe that Mauna Kea can be a place of a pursuit of knowledge to make us a better people and better stewards of this land. This isn't just about Mauna Kea. This is of stewards all over the world. I believe that Mauna Kea can be an international symbol of nations together for the pursuit of peace. Mauna Kea can be and should be a monument for the world for peace on earth, a home of the cosmopolitan culture, people that belong to the world, a hope for the world. Why is that so important? I just told you what I feel about peace on earth. And for those of you who don't remember the word cosmopolitan, you have missed out on one of the most precious things of Hawaii that I bragged about. I even wrote a paper about it in college, the word cosmopolitan. And when you have time, I want you to go to the Manoa campus and go look at beauty pageants of Kapalapala. I think they stopped it in 1960 or something. And you would have your classification of Miss Japanese, Miss Hawaiian, Miss Portuguese, but you had Miss Cosmopolitan. And for those of us born in this isolated place on God's earth, we thought the world was like us, how naive of us that we thought the world's people was like us. It's only after I grew up and leave that I found out how lucky I was. And that's why I feel so strongly about what I say now and then and tomorrow. And of everything that guides me of how I work. Cosmopolitan. I was asked to go speak to the Kona students, 800 of them. And KL school and other schools, and I make that a point, I bring it in, of the specialness of you. People that belong to the world. I tell people I have one granddaughter, just one. She's Scotch, Irish, English, Korean, Portuguese, Filipino, Hawaiian, and by golly, she goes to Kamehameha School. <laughs> and I'm proud of that. And that's what I meant by international symbol for us. Because the world needs some place like Hawaii. The acknowledgement of the people of Hawaii and the contributions to the science of astronomy of Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea to be the living museum of the people of the first nation of Hawaii. 
Everyone on my island knows I don't say indigenous people anymore. Why? Because I consider that almost like an insult. And I copy the country of Canada, who will not also use that word. And so all of you must know in one way or the other, you must have heard me say it, the people of Hawaii, the Hawaiians, the people of the First Nation of Hawaii. I believe that Mauna Kea is an opportunity for Hawaii to be the center of discovery of mankind and the universe. I believe that Mauna Kea can be and should be this. I still believe that. You think I don't know the controversy of 30 meter? I'm a news freak. I keep track national, international, and local as a matter of habit. Part of the job as a mayor is a very difficult one in the sense that with all your other responsibilities in your area of control and authority, you are responsible in part for economic growth. This is not a proposal to this board. This was an answer of a question. And I said, you know, I know the controversy of Mauna Kea. But within that, I thought, I don't like the way Hawaii is being developed to be of resorts because of what it takes away from a lifestyle of land, price of land, and everything else relating to resorts. Not to snow you, but I have my master's degree in economics, and we learned that. And I hope Hawaii Island does not make the focus of economy resorts. So when I looked at Mauna Kea, I said, what an opportunity. This is the Mount France. Of this kind of economic growth of international recognition, that every single person that would fly over, come over, or look at this mountain to know what it stands for. And you've got to hear the rest of the words, what I said, a symbol of the cosmopolitan people of Hawaii and the people of the First Nation of Hawaii and what they are, what they stood for. And even that I said, and the wrongs done to them. That's what I meant by living museum. So I chose a bad word of park. But they did not mean an industrial park like that, a nasty call. How dare you make a proposal to OHA tomorrow for an industrial park at Mauna Kea? But I blame myself because of the use of the word park, because I did not have this kind of opportunity to talk to people. And on the management of Mauna Kea, I guarantee you, because of my lack of tact. The people at the university will all tell you of my severe criticism towards them because of the mismanagement of Mauna Kea. The people at the Astronomy Center will tell you where all the people the Scopes is present and ask me the same question about my opinion of Mauna Kea. And I told them, you are to blame in part for the controversy of Mauna Kea today because of you trashing the mountain. And we have got to be better. And therefore, I reread the first sentence. A pursuit of knowledge to make us a better people and better stewards of this land. Every word had a context of things beyond just the word. But I don't blame you for misinterpreting what I said of a park, because that word was used. So I am gracious of this opportunity to explain. And I will close with this. I just had a beautiful opportunity to talk to some very special people. The same question, what is your opinion of Mauna Kea? 
but I don't give an opinion of Manakea in isolation of what I feel about life in the world. You guys should know, because I know some of you in here are very renowned people of knowledge. I'm scared stiff of what's happening in Syria. I'm scared stiff of what's happening in Korea. I'm scared stiff of the growing gap between Russia and the United States and Iran and other countries. I grew up and raised before World War II began. The impact of war in my life is deep. So you dedicate your life of everything you do and say not to create and promote war, war between people. You know what I am most gracious of today? And I will go home and remember that above anything else. I am sitting there. And people came up here to testify how strongly they be, were against of what I was proposing. I still have the graciousness of the Hawaiian people of warmth, of compassion, and walk over there and give me a hug. You think you're going to find that elsewhere? You don't even know yourself, I think, how special you are. I know because I'm an outsider and I compare. This is not a proposal, ladies and gentlemen of this board, trustee. I just asked for an opportunity to explain what I felt about this precious mountain, this precious people, my fears of the world, my hope that the precious people of Hawaii because of who you are innately. You are the birth of the cosmopolitan people. You think if all these other cultural ethnic groups came to a society as immigrant laborers, would be welcome? Would you welcome my father and mother? No way, Jose. But what did you do because of who you are? You created the cosmopolitan people, people that belong to the world. I know that. I will always know that. Do I think Mauna Kea can be done right? I think so. Because part of it would be to teach the world and people of this land that you were wronged. That's what I meant by living museum. And I think I've gone way too long, and maybe I should write so I don't get emotionally involved. But I don't know how to talk that way. I thank this board for the beautiful opportunity of talking to you. I ask your forgiveness of my words used that were misunderstood. You were wrong. The university did a poor job of management. We all need to get better. I felt Mauna Kea could be an international monument for the Aboriginal people of Australia, the indigenous people all over the world, of Taiwan, all of the American Indians. And I thought, what greater monument, what greater place than Hawaii? Thank you for this time. Mahalo, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor from Big Island, taking the time to come to visit with us. I thank you for your courage and your boldness, and that's the other side that people respect you for. That's right. Mr. Mayor Kim, that you got guts. And I thank you for your honesty and your forthrightness and allowing us to have this time with you. Trustee Le'a I think there's more aloha for us than some Hawaiians do for the old people. <laughs> you know, what he feels, his manao, it's just beautiful. Trustee Robert Lindsay, Big thank you, Island, Madam Chair. Hawaii Island Trustee. Amir Kim, I want to thank you all and all the folks who have come today to be around our people's table to talk about the different issues that have been discussed this morning and now this afternoon. I will affirm I've known Mayor Kim since 1970. When I was a probation officer with our family court, 
He was director of our law enforcement administration agency. We go back that long. And I will affirm that our mayor, as our chair has said, he's got a lot of guts. He says what he, he means what he says and he says what he means. But I will affirm that he is a man of aloha, love for our land, love for our islands, a kind, decent, and truthful person. So mahalo, Mayor, for being here. Thank you. Madam Chair. Trustee Kana. Yes. Of course. Of course. Who else? I want to thank you very much for coming. And you are certainly a man uh, of courage. I, don't, I can't ever uh, imagine any other elected official coming here in your position uh, in, humbling, in a humbling way to say what you what you have said. I thank you so very much. And that's why you get elected all the time, you know? People trust you because you say what you mean. You are who you are. And uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Trustee Kili Aquino. Mayor Kim, aloha to you. Aloha to you, sir. Thank you for the mentorship you've provided to me. I wanted to say that you're very gracious to acknowledge that the native Hawaiian people have a special kuleana for Mauna Wa'akea. I thank you. Ours is a kuleana that is spiritual, that is cultural and historical. But I want to, in graciousness and in love, slightly disagree with you. When you very humbly say you have no kuleana, I would suggest that your heart has shown that you have the kuleana that comes truly from aloha and that in addition to being a true Keiki Kaina yourself, you were put into office by the people of Hawaii, which included Hawaiians. Your overwhelming landslide victory was on an island that has 35% Kanaka Maoli Native Hawaiians who voted for you. And while we don't hear the voices of all Native Hawaiians at any time around any table, you actually represent Native Hawaiians as well. And I thank you for your kuleana for not only our sacred places, but for our people. Aloha to you, sir. Thank you for that. Dan Ahuna. I'd also like to say mahalo, Mayor Kim, for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, my question is, I think we're in agreement that UH has failed us in stewardship. How, how do you, how do you uh, suggest that we should be moving forward, knowing that we all agree that UH has failed? I need to uh, restate that this is Yes, give me a personal opinion. Okay. <laughs> That's what you came here to speak about, your personal opinions. I'd like to hear that. The past week, a couple of weeks now, to be a small, small part of the whole clear coming home was a beautiful opportunity to meet uh, different people and talk different things. I know your Hawaiians of any measurement being Hawaiian, uh, must have felt an immense degree of pride that you cannot explain. I felt a lot of tears around me. But within that, I had an opportunity to talk to the President of the General Assembly of the United Nations about Mauna Kea. First of all, without any mention of words, the people of the university was told that we did a very, very poor job of caring for Mauna Kea. That the management of this place was almost nil in many things. I felt that the management of Mauna Kea, if it was, if it was, please, just my opinion, okay? if it was to proceed, had to be done under a different management structure. If it was to proceed, I felt, and this is no snow, when I first became mayor, you know what I required my cabinet to do? To read the Constitution, of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. 
It was mandated that they know what your role was, that you are in the Constitution of the State of Hawaii and know what your role was. Because of everything in short of Hawaiian needed to be passed through you. And I wanted them to know it. And of this, Mauna Kea, a ceded land, I don't think can be or should go forward without the heavy involvement of OHA in partnership with the state. But you're not even in partnership of any kind now except 20% of the zero revenues. <laughs> yeah, that's right, <laughs> zero. I've, I will pursue that question a little more because it is important. So you know the thought that went through my mind. I don't just speak off the hip as it may seem. I think about it. When they asked me, how did, would this be accomplished? I told them, it's not for me to decide. What I think is necessary is an organizational structure made up of hand-picked, I don't know the numbers, but it'd be five, six, seven, or 10, hand-picked people who would draw the bylaws of this governing body. Then hand-picked by others, for the selection of this number of people who would be the governing body, independent of government. And organizationally answering to the governing body of OHA and the state government. I asked the president of the University of Hawaii recently how would you feel about discussion on that? And the president said, I know we need to take a look at the whole picture. I am open to any discussion on the reorganization. This is what the president told me. And I know I have his permission to say it because I asked him, yeah, you give me permission to say that? You've asked. He said, that's fine with him. So you know what made me feel very good about that, sir? A recognition by the president that they was wrong. Recognition that we got to be better. Recognition that, yes, we got to be open to a total reorganization of the governance of this place. Hell's bells, that's 11,000 acres. You represent the people of Hawaii by law. That's my answer to you, sir. It should be a heavy part of the governing body. Thank you very much, Mayor Kim. Um, I also have, you talked about your role in reacting to the Constitution. In the Constitution, it talks about a traditional and customary right. Our people for, for decades have been getting arrested, and they have this traditional and customary right. How, did this, how does this help um, um, when you say world peace by bringing the whole world when our, you know, for decades, our, our people didn't even have the right to even be up there on the mountain. And I like what you're saying. Are you considering taking TMT off the table too? You're not going to like this answer, but I'll answer you. It's always got to be of truth. I feel that this world, we, we got to wake up. I think the world is a threat. I think we all know in this room that through our ignorance of things, we have developed enough nuclear capability to destroy life as you and I know it. Yes, people will survive a nuclear war, but the Earth will not in regards to the way it is today. We will not. We learned that in just the testing of some of the South Pacific Islands where the federal government promised people there that you'll be back. And here it is in 2017 and the land is still contaminated. And that's the word the world will be. 
I pushed that, sir, because of the knowledge I had fear and concern of all of that. And I really thought, and this is the answer to that, when I was a kid, of World War II, of thousands and thousands and millions of people, especially citizens dying. There was one country in the world that said, we will not be part of your war. You may come and visit, but leave your wars behind. And by golly, the world recognized that country, and that was Switzerland. And because of that memory of past, I thought, boy, the world needs a template. It needs a template of hope. That's why I put that word in there. There's not going to be a magic because if the United Nations say we'll identify that as a place of hope, a beacon of hope, what else have we got if we don't have a template of a place in a world of people? And this is why I told you I said it all over the world. I don't know a more gracious, givenness, kindest people than the people of Hawaii, of Hawaii, that gave birth to the cosmopolitan people. You think I don't know some of the pains that you're talking about? You could talk to my friends about me and my friends about growing up, being treated the way they were treated. Don't ever misjudge what I say by what I'm proposing so you disagree with what I propose. Hey, I expect that, but I'm answering a question of what I feel. I wish there were other things I felt of, avenues of hope for the world. But by golly, don't you think we got to find something because these crazy leaders of our world, of elsewhere, they talk about threats like, you do that and you're going to regret it because you're going to be retaliated against. Or you do this. These are the leaders of the world. And I thought, my God, are we going to have some idiots someday push that button with the H-bomb? Give us a place of hope. I think the people of Hawaii and the mountain of Mauna Kea could be that. Did I push it? No, I just answered the question. Well, all trustee to ask that question, I don't think it's fair because all itself didn't take a stand. We're still in a neutral position and we should, su we should support. I, I'm not asking for a stand, okay? I just answer the question. I, I will close. I know I've gone way over my time element. I thank the, your audience there that we've been here since 10 o'clock in the morning. If you believe one thing I said today, believe this. I know a small portion of your hate, yes, hate, of what is happening and what you don't want to happen. I joked for a long time, but not a joke. I don't want Hawaii Island to be a Waikiki. And I'll read this last thing that is our guiding light for my cabinet. The protection and preservation of the historical and cultural specialists of this land, the most precious and beautiful place on earth. That's our team for the next three and a half years of the county government of Hawaii. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Um, Mahalo. Trustees, what I would like to do is take out of order. Let's move the community concerns because we have six people that would like to address the issues. So I'm going to move now to call as the first speaker in the community concerns as Kau Kaohu Wahilani followed by Kapua Kili Koa Kamai. Rather than take the executive session, I'm just making that statement. We're going to take community concerns out of order so that you don't have to wait until we reconvene. Ka Ka'ohu, thank you for being patient. 
Born and raised in Anakuli, first road homestead, 1966. 1968, we moved to Hilo, lived in Lanakila housing for five years because my mother was in the very first Hawaiian language class was taught with Larry Kimurida up at UH Hilo and America Venepukui was the Kumu. I was raised over there, Lanakila housing. Who circle stayed back with me? Oh, Aina. As to Mary Kim, when we lived, and I also lived on Moko Kelby from 98 to 04. And he was our Meriden. Good man, Mr. Kim. I plenty, plenty aloha for you. But my aloha come for our Aina first, for our people. Talk about template, Mr. Kim. We had a template, Nana Ikekumu. That was our first kupuna that was here. You know, and you, you talk about cosmopolitan. Prior to January 17, 1893, we was ready on multi-ethnicity -ethnic kingdom. Why? Because Nakupuna shared aloha, lived aloha, talked aloha, walked aloha. Banalike, you share, was inclusive. Our Nakupuna was always inclusive, was never exclusive. You cannot make on, in my opinion, you cannot make on a, a monument of peace without resolving the conflict first. The conflict is, Mauna Kea is, 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 is a big part of, our, of who we are as, as Kanaka. The first light hit Mauna Kea. Tallest mountain on the planet from sea level. Tallest mountain in Polynesia. But however, Kiakua or Nakua gave our Nakupuna the Ike and Mekanawa to take the greatest leap of faith. We'll jump on to their vow, wherever they came from, if we'll come here. The most isolated islands, like you said, American. In the biggest ocean, in the middle of the planet. You trial and error and thrive. Thrive. Now we stay here again. Two years ago, we came over here for Mauna Kea. I took off. I had to work this morning, but I made sure I had to come over here for stand for Mauna Wakia. You know, we get plenty of love. But my poina, my poina naka naka maui. My poina naka poe kahiko. My poina kuumo i wahini lili kalani. My poina natupuna. A conflict. Can I have peace without resolving a conflict, everybody? The conflict, the big conflict here, to me, my opinion, everybody over here, I love each and every one of you folks, but we, we're, all, we're all working on the false pretense. Why? We're standing on truth. 1981, American. None of us knew the truth. That there's no treaty of annexation. That, that no country can occupy another country without a treaty of annexation, not a joint resolution. Mahalo to our kupuna or to our alakais that went up and found the palapala. I bet you the U.S. right now, they're thinking, damn, we should have freaking burned that up. But that's the truth. And that's what we're learning. And now, all our nakiki that stay in Halau Kumana, Kamaka, all the charter schools, they're learning that truth. That's what we get. But we come from generational hurt. Deep hurt we come from. That's the conflict. The conflict is what? We're going to be on good Christian or something, but what, what would Christ do? He'll say if we'll we do what is righteous or we'll do what is porno. But how can we do what is porno when we stay you know, resolve the conflict? If we all stand together and be fearless, like our Kupuna did when they first went into the Baha, and they had the, they had the greatest leap of faith, and they traversed, and they came here. Because our Kupuna went stand, it was because there was no treaty of annexation. So how can everybody who is on the false pretense? International law and U.S. constitutional law. No country. You should know that. Trust the Akini um, lawyer, right? Judge, where's Judge Klein? 
So why why are we still why are we still acting like we second citizens? Well, this is our this is our people. We stand fearless. When I went a couple years ago to judge in town because I stand not as an American Ohana. I would stand as a citizen of the Hawaiian Kingdom, as a Hawaiian national. And had the judge, was Judge Mark and Judge Ashford, they told me two separate occasions, Mr. Wahilani, if this court finds you guilty, we're going to have to deport you. If they told me that like seven years ago, I wouldn't even gotten myself in that situation. But seven years ago, I was sucking nene. Now I'm eating a hooky hooky. And now I'm stand. And the judge told me that, and I told the judge, oh yeah, where are you going to deport me? My mokuaha predates, my, which is my genealogy, predates the first contact of Western man in 1778 when Captain Crook went land on the islands. That's what I told, that's what I told the judge. And he looked at me, and he, he never expected coming out of this conductor from Waianae. He's not getting educated. He's getting informed in the truth. We need to be fearless. You know, we get, come on out, no, we get 40,000 kupuna standing next to us everywhere. That's why when I go now, I stand fearless. But I do everything in Pono. Because you cannot go for it if you're in heaven. So in order for, for even talk about peace, you got to resolve the conflict. There is conflict, why? Right? You see this face? Generational hurt. It's on the truth. We was lied too. That's why my kids, they don't know say to pledge allegiance to the flag. Mahalo Kia Kua. Kao, can you summarize? So I just summarize that. Thank you. That you folks, the trustees, Oha, stand fearless and stay on you guys' turn. My Puina. Puliana. Mahalo. Oh. Kapua, Kiliiko, Kamai, followed by Candice Fujikani. Aloha, Oa, Kapua, Kiliiko, Kamai again. Um, thank you, Mayor Kim, for staying. And for all your years of service, and definitely for his aloha. I've never doubted it. But very, Kaumaha, very concerned when I hear that the mayor is coming to speak towards EMT on Mauna Kea. Spoke to several different points. I hope I can remember to address some of them. As I mentioned earlier, Yaku put us, Kanaka Maoli, here for a reason. Because he knows that we carry the kuleana of our kupuna or our mo'opuna and the many, many generations to come. So today, our TNT is the gem of the world. And the world, or at least France, Canada, and America, and UH, is asking the Kanaka, oh, it's okay, but it is not okay. Because as we know with technology, in time, the TMT will be like the devices that we carry today, old and ancient, just like the Keck observatories up there. At their time, they were the technology of tomorrow. That's what we're always being sold, or the future. For somebody else. But what about for us? For us in our keiki. Enough is enough. And not only 
is TMT Heva. All of that development up there is Heva. Like the good mayor stated, management was poor. Therefore, change the managers. This board, this office was created for a purpose. It is to stand for your kanaka. Not for the benefit of the fake state. For all the other people that come, for all of that development in Kaka'aka, which is not for us, all of those luxury million dollar homes, not for us, but for others to come. Eva Loa. Every time we need to fill a vacancy, why is it that the fake state always has to go look somewhere else when our very own people can excel at managing our own assets, our own resources. And I'm not just speaking to the Kanaka Maoli, because when you are like Mayor Kim and others that come to our Kopai Aina Hawaii, and you see, you come to know the people, you know that this is a special place. We are special people because we carry the kuleana. The aina is our chief. We serve the aina by allowing this continued desecration. Corporation is being served. That we have to stop. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you, Kapua. Candice Hujikani followed by Laulani Teal if she's still here. And it'll be Walter Reedy after Candice Hujikani. Aloha, my Kako. Aloha, Candice. Aloha, Mayor Kim. Thank you for staying and to listen to us. <clears throat> My name is Candice Fujikane. Uh, I've been teaching at UH for 22 years, and um, I teach the Mo'olelo of Hawaii. Uh, I teach my students about land struggles, about aloha aina struggles. Um, I'm also a board member of Kahea, the Hawaiian Environmental Alliance, uh, one of the petitioners in the contested case hearing against the TMT. But I'm here uh, for myself, and uh, I'm a member of the hui organized by uh, Clarence Kukawakahiching called Huakaiina Aina Mauna. And we walk the mountain lands uh, in the practice of Kaapuni Makaikai to learn about the Mo'olelo, but also to monitor the sacred sites. And we have seen a lot of devastation on the Mauna, especially to the sacred springs on the other side. But we've walked across the northern plateau where the TNT uh, is proposed to be built. And um, I, I know I, I don't want to go into the eight conservation district criteria that the TMT cannot possibly fulfill. It is not consistent with the purpose of a conservation district. Uh, it, it has been the TMT's final environmental impact statement already acknowledges that it will have an impact that is substantial, adverse, and significant. All of that has been covered, yeah? And it's, um, but I wanted to talk about how coming here today, I'm filled with kamaha. It is hard to come in front of decision makers again and again and again to explain why the TMT cannot be built, why it would be a desecration. Mauna Kea, the northern plateau, is an incredibly beautiful place. And it's very quiet. Cannot sustain industrial 
activities there. And it, it is so much heaviness, very heavy heart that I come here today, even though it's a privilege to stand for Mount Awakea. And I feel this hum, this kaumaha, having been there, having sat through four years of uh, meetings of the Board of Land and Natural Resources, at the contested case hearing at the Supreme Court. And I want to say that this kaumaha, also I feel, I'm sorry, Mayor Kim, I feel it when you look at Mauna Wakea and you see an economic opportunity. That's, that makes us feel this grief that you look at it and see dollar signs. Now, Mayor Kim, I don't have mo'oku auhau either. I'm not Hawaiian. I'm Japanese. I look at you, and I see my uncles and my father. I see my grandfather. I see the men in my family. I know you have a good heart. But I also see Ronald Fujiyoshi, who got arrested with the kia'i on April 2nd. He was one of the 31 who was arrested, and he also does not have we don't have genealogy, but we have a choice. So the academic term we use for who we are, we, we don't have mo'oku auhau, we're settlers. But as settlers, we can choose to be allies, or we can choose to be colonial settlers who perpetuate the colonial processes. <laughs> to think about Mauna Wakea as a museum puts the injustices in the past Colonialism and occupation is not relegated to the past. It's ongoing today. Yeah. It continues today. You said certain things like Mauna, oh, I'm sorry, you said um, the people of Hawaii, the Kanaka Maoli, were wronged. They continue to be wronged. And the TNT would perpetuate that. So I'm just putting it out there for you. We have a choice. We can be allies. Um, I want to also remind everybody that uh, a little over two years ago, on June 24th, about the arrests that happened on the Mauna, and I was there. And it, yes, I remember you were there. I remember you were there, and Danahuna was there. I remember you were there. And people were wailing at the arrests. Twelve arrests, people wailing, away. Not just Hawaiians, but non-Hawaiians who were there too. There are many, many of us who know how sacred Mauna Wakea is. And that grief, okay, so what is that? 31 arrests that day, uh, 12 arrests, I'm sorry, 12, I'm sorry, 12 arrests that day, 31 arrests April 2nd, eight arrests on September 9th. All of those arrests testify to the lengths people will go to to protect the Mauna. Uh, Soli Niheu told me before he passed, he said, you know, just send out the kahea and all the people will come and we will lay our bodies and our kalaka on the road so that the tractors and the bulldozers cannot go up there. I'm not Hawaiian, but I'm willing to get arrested. And there are a lot of other non-Hawaiians who feel that way too. Um, I want to also say that um, one of the leaders, Ohule Vaya'u, she was the alaka'i of the 11th line. She's the one who led the people in chanting Ohanao Kamauna, and they stopped the, the procession. It stopped at 9-11. And she had this really beautiful thing that she said. Now, all the people, in row upon row upon row up on the mountain, right? She said, you know, when they heard the leaders, Kaho'okahi and Andre and Kalekoa, Jo'alapa'i, all of these people, today Lori uh, Halemano is here too, uh, all the people getting arrested, they were afraid. They were afraid. They were really scared. But she said to the people, no worry, no worry. And this, I have it right here. She says, we like the teeth of the mano. When one shark's tooth fall out, there's always another to replace it. Not like, watch out, we won't bite you. No, what we realize is that there are always many, many rows behind that front line. Many, many leaders who are coming into their own and are willing to step up to lead us. And that's why this fight is not going to stop. 
is not it cannot possibly lay a foundation for okay, peace Candace, okay ask you to okay i'm sorry i i don't know oh, oh okay i didn't even see this thing sorry. over here okay yeah. so um i just wanted to say um I, I hope that this proposal for a cultural park is withdrawn because there is no way that the TMT can possibly ever lead to peace. Thank you. Walter Reedy, Walter Reedy, thank you for your patience. You're on the same flight with me today. Are you going on Hawaiian? Walter Reedy. Okay, hurry up. Mr. Uh, Mayor Kim. Walter well, really going to escort you to wherever you go and he like share his manao with you. Okay, our next speaker is Clara Pana. Um, okay, where's Clara Pana? I'll call you up. You'll be the last speaker, Walter. Okay, come now then. Oh, you guys, I need whistle. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Yeah, I was hoping that I could speak to Harry. Harry's a good guy, um, but time and place is all screwed up. And he thinks he's just speaking as a person, but he's the mayor. So all of us in this room, we're here not because he's a person, but because he's the mayor. Exactly. You know, he cannot just say things and not realize who he is and the impact he's having on everybody. And what I wanted to tell him was that I don't think he really, he said that, oh, he understands the controversy. And I don't think too many of us really understand the controversy. When you say it in that light, you really don't understand what is going on. This is not just a controversy. This is something that comes along every 50 years or so. And the last time I saw anything like this was Kaho'olawe, where there's something about the issue that codifies the Hawaiian community. And this issue is not going to just disappear. This is a do or die issue. This is an issue that you cannot compromise on. There is no compromise on this issue of the TMT. So I wanted to try and explain to him what people have done and, and how this issue has impacted all of the different islands. I've been able to travel to all of the different islands about this issue and been involved on Oahu about this issue, seeing young kids going on the street, stopping cars on, on uh, King Street, signs and all of the rural areas. This is not just any old controversy. So for him to say what he said, maybe in 1981 it would make a lot of sense. In a lot of things made sense in 81. We were all holies back then. But now we're beginning to realize who we really are. So his statements, even though they're well-meaning, confusing, number one. He's not quite clear what, what he's really saying. And it's being done at a time where the issue of Mauna Kea needs to be left to the people. This is not a governmental issue. This is a people issue that came from the people. They're the ones who are putting all the energy. They're the ones who are getting arrested. They're the ones laying down their lives. It's a people movement. So for him, a politician, to be saying these things about what the future should look like on Mauna Kea, maybe he can say this peace thing should be at Mauna Lani or something, you know, where you know, it's already screwed up, and then you've got to go fix it. But this place he's talking about it is people, the peace people of the world, the way it is. And we used to have politicians that had foresight, <clears throat> like Roosevelt, FDR. He said there are certain places in the United States that you see but don't touch, that you just protect and leave it alone, and they form the national parks. There's no difference with what this is all about on Mauna Kea. This is a place. All those buildings, sooner or later, is going to have to come off. It's going to have to come off. The mana of that place. Is, and it's our generation, when we were young, when nobody was paying, paying attention, it's our fault. You know, it's our generation that allowed those kinds of things to happen. It's our generation that allowed the fishes to be disappearing in the ocean because we, we thought that they would never disappear. 
So we made those kinds of mistakes. Now this generation, when it comes to this issue, like, they see what happened on the coastline, right? Waikiki, the Gold Coast of the Big Island, that coastline is going to be like Waikiki, where hardly any Hawaiians go over there. No more fish anyway, so why go over there? So you push the Hawaiians away from the ocean and they're, and they're living. Then you get all these genetically modified international companies come to Hawaii because of our weather, and they start poisoning our, our uka lands. So we lose the kai lands, we lose the uka lands. Now we're at the top of the mountain. Where are we going to go next? It's the cliff. We pushed up against the cliff. So that's what, when he's talking about what he's talking about is us as Hawaiians, you know, draw a line in the sand. We cannot go anyplace else. We will not lose this battle. And you will not tell us what the future of this island and this mountain is all about. It's up to the people to decide. So those are the things that I wanted to talk to him about. And I don't think I'm ever going to be able to do it. But I wanted to talk maybe to you guys that this issue should be lying in the sand. You cannot allow us to be pushed off the top of the mountain. And that's where we are. We are at the cliff. So this generation and what I'm hearing from this generation, not only are they going to refuse to be pushed off the, the cliff, but they're going to start going back down the hill. And Pohakuloa is in their sights. <laughs> So that's, that's what I like about this generation, is that they're going to holy this thing and start going back down the hill. Mahalo. Mahalo. Walker. Mahalo. Is Claire up on a year? Can somebody look for her outside? She's there. She's Thank you very much for taking action on this on the um, Maui sand hills, sand mining, protection of our EV. Um, this is not agendized, and what I want to say is that the great travesty of erasure of our people from the central Maui sand dunes is occurring at the hands of development so that they can continue to develop. And while your motion is, is excellent for um, the, the TMK that ends in 153, it does not cover the history and the land that is still in jeopardy. And um, Especially for the for the um, people who believe in keeping our history and keeping the stories, there are so many excellent stories of bravery, of um, Keiku Hapio fighting off the entire Maui army for hours, hours, so that the his the other people in the uh, his army could rest. There's a story of Kivalao, excuse me for the way I pronounce that, coming across the sand and bringing peace with his uncle, Kahikili. And the battle ends because he was brave enough to walk across that sand and risk his life to go and make peace with his uncle. And all of these things are being discredited by development so that they can continue to grade sand mine and build houses where the warriors may have, li may have last lain so that there is no history that is significant there. I would ask, you know, um, we were waiting in great, great anticipation for Kai Markell's report. Um, we have not been able to substantiate what we need to bring forth this battle. And, and I, we were looking forward to his information because we have not been able to get the information
from State Historic Preservation Department. I, I wonder if it is possible that that to hear him to hear what he was not going today, to give you. Not at this meeting. Because Can as we soon as you're done speaking and Jermaine? We need to finish the rest of our business, which is to go into executive session. Can can, can I just interview him? I think Roman is ready to allow that. Yes, that, could go and visit that's him. fine. I can, I can visit him. Yeah. In, but uh, what I was going to say, Claire, actually, as a result of the motion that the board just passed, a lot of the 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 the, the research information that Kai has accumulated over years. We'll be, we'll be actually implementing that as a result of the board action to, to address the, the county of Maui, Shipti, and the land division. And so that will be made available to the beneficiaries? Um, I, I, I think you can discuss it with him, but I think that, uh, I, I don't know exactly what report you're talking about because there's several, but we can, we can talk about that later. Uh, well, whatever he was going to update everybody with today, uh, we we would just like to know what it is. Can I go and interview him? Yes, that's yes. fine. Okay, thank you very much. And um, what what I can basically tell you is, his division ac actually reviews a lot of the reports and incidences within the state of Hawaii. And so they have accumulated over the years of different types of incidences with respect to the sand dunes. So what we will do is take a look at that overall to present a case. Absolutely, thank yep. you. We, we just don't have privy to right. that knowledge. Right. So Claire, I would, if you have time, rather than rushing off to the airport, mm -hmm. please um, arrange to go and ask him if he's available to talk to you. Yeah, thank you. I, I will do that. And so my, my, um, what I'm bringing up is the, um, being able to identify the sand dunes, all the sand hills that go from Kapuna, which is down by Waiehu, Waihe'e, all the way across to Ma'alaya, the only inland sand dunes of its kind in the whole world. And to set that aside and be recognized by this board as a vahipana for the numerous, numerous burials, the, the, ba the battle histories that have gone into this place, especially the Battle of Kakanilua, which was one of the most important and most known battles of uh, the history of um, Hawaii. So. Um, so, Claire, we acknowledge so, that part of your testimony on Maui, you did acknowledge, you, you listed this in your testimony about right. attempting to get a determination on our vahipana for these areas. So it's, it's, it's very different from what you're asking now. So perhaps when you speak to Ka, you, you're looking at a more cultural definition of these areas. So that might engage us to, if right. that's the next step, right. we would probably have to contract somebody to survey those areas, validate some of the historical events, and come forward as to why it can be classified and honored as a vahipana, from Kapuna all the way to Malaya. So that's other kind of stuff that I think would be helpful for Kai to have a range of his scope. Right. I'll, I'll just say, Claire, I, I, I support what uh, Chair has just shared, so actually, <coughs> Based on what Kai has shared, we, we, we under, understand and have very similar understandings of the historical account. Moving forward, it, it, would, it would have to be where it cannot just be the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. It would be a Maui and Lanai Burial Council in addition to uh, working with Chipti to recognize the Vahipana of that area. But before we get to that point, we have to do some real fundamental uh, groundwork in terms of laying a full, comprehensive, thorough um, case with regarding the archaeological significance of that whole entire area, and we can talk to you uh, on the side about that. But I, you're, we, I think we, we, we're, we're, we do have we have done the research on that, that, and so we could help you if you wanted. Right. And um, and I thank you, and I just ask that we be apprised of any anything that occurs with your motion. Right. Thank you. Right. 
I'd like to Thank call the next speaker is, and our last speaker is Jermaine Myers for community concerns. Uh, again, my name is Jermaine Myers for the record. I'm a OHA beneficiary for beneficiary advocacy and empowerment and a Nanakuli Hawaiian homestead lessee. Aloha. I put down for community concerns because I did want to hear the conceptual plan of Mayor Kim before I give feedback about it. And so we did hear, we did listen. I'm so grateful that our community comes out and we confront the issues. Even though it's difficult to confront them, we must confront them because we can see what happens when we didn't confront them in the past. What I do want to say, uh, acknowledge first and foremost is that I appreciated Trustee Dana Huna confronting it, confronting it with the mayor. I think he asked a question that many of us were had on our mind. We wanted to know if the conceptual plan included TMT. And what I appreciated is that by confronting it and by asking mayor, mayor did not give us really a clear answer. Um, I, I proud myself on being a very good listener. I was born without um, I born without picture in my eardrum, so of course I'm wearing hearing aids. But God has um, not given me a perfect hearing, but what he has given me is perfect listening. And so I did listen and I didn't hear yes or no, because a question such as what Trustee Dana Huna had presented and confronted Mayor Kim with was a very clear question. Is TMT on the table or not? and it could give us a very clear answer, yes or no. Instead, I didn't hear a yes or no, so I have to make assumptions. So what I'm now bared with is to come and ask my OHA trustees, if we can now look at what the testimonies that have been provided by all of us, and look at what the majority has been saying and has been saying for a long time, and I think that's what Trustee Ahuna has been trying to say, is that we don't want TMT on there. We do want our mountain to look like Mount Fuji. And it was, it's interesting is that the Japanese people, their leaders have seen that they don't want antennas poking out of the snow. They don't want buildings poking out of the snow, 30 feet buildings or 30, I don't know how many feet is that telescope gonna be on there. They don't, see, they, don't, they don't see that vision, those leaders, the Japanese leaders who are in charge of Japan. Unfortunately, Hawaiian leaders are not in charge of Hawaii. Instead, we have this organization that we are told that this organization represents us. So that's why we have to come here and confront you, our elected officials, and ask you to represent the strongest voice. And our strongest voice is hearing that we don't want our EV in Maui to be desecrated and used on a rail, as well as we don't want TMT on the mountain. We don't want antennas there anymore, and we just want it to look natural and pristine the way God had created it. And we don't want people tracking in their diseases and tracking them out and going out and then blaming us. So that is what I wanted to say about Mauna Kea because I did not see a presentation. But what I would like to ask our trustees, is that if Mayor Kim can be on the agenda, can us, the beneficiaries, be on the agenda? And we give our proposal, our concept, of what it means for us and how we want Mauna Kea to look without TMT. And what we would like to declare how we want our future to look, so that this generation will be the voice for the next generation and three generations to come, like the Bible says but you must confront the issues. Another issue that was confronted was an audit. And I want to say that last night, I went on the computer, as I've done every night, and then I seen that the, it was posted, the audit services. And so I want to mahalo chair, and I want to mahalo administration for posting the audit services uh, procurement contract. And it was 11 pages, and I didn't have a chance to read it all after I downloaded it because I had a little puppy. Well, I call him puppy, even though he's four years old. He keeps, after I'm out all day, he seems to want all the attention. But I was reading here and there between dodging his licking in my face, and I saw that it, one, it had um, 
Ho'opono things. It had things about giving um, feedback to our resource management chairperson. And so I appreciated all of that. I appreciated that all the voices that have come out have been heard. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you, Chair. Mahalo. Okay, community from near and far, we thank you for your presence at our meeting. Um, we ask that you allow us now to re re recuse ourselves into executive session Oof. under HRS 92-5A okay. and 4 to discuss a very important contested case relating to groundwater use by Molokai, by Kukui Molokai, which has been ongoing for over 10 years. So I ask you to be patient with us, and we thank you for your time and making your manao known. And all of your manao, as you know, is very serious to us. And it's not something that we fluff or bounce off of. We take it to heart, and we, we, are, we, are, we do care. And I want to acknowledge Trustee Dan Aluna for his role in the Mauna Kea Ad Hoc Committee and him for being so bold to move forward with us op-ed piece that appeared, appeared on Wednesday in the advertiser. We had tried to schedule it for a Sunday, but that, was already, that space was already taken. There will be additional movement that we may be able to announce after all of this today. So we thank you for your time, and um, I call on Trustee Alhuna for the motion to recuse ourselves. To, okay, it's been moved. So moved and seconded by um, Trustee Hulu Lindy. Okay. And I, too, want to thank everyone for coming and showing up. And, discussing these matters. I think um, wh what I do want to say is we, we, we work for our people, and we didn't want to get mixed up in who's presenting on the table. So it was important for us to make sure that our people was updated before this all happened. So thank you very much for coming and taking the time to be here and sincere about what's going on in our, our, our issues with, with Hawaiian issues. So thank you so much, everyone. The roll call vote for the executive session. Yes. Yeah. Aye. Yes. Yes. Thank you.